Look, no one understands this material better than you. Just give him a rundown on the sub and appraise you the stuff in your hand. He's liable to ask some direct questions. Give him direct answers. Tell him what you think. Come on. <clears throat> uh, gentlemen, the last 24 hours have seen some extraordinary Soviet naval activity. The first to sail was this ship, we believe called the Red October, in reference to the October Revolution of 1917. A variant of the Typhoon class, she's some 650 feet long and 32,000 tons submerged displacement, roughly the same size as a World War II aircraft carrier. We believe that these doors here on the bow and again on the stern enclose a unique propulsion system, a magneto-hydrodynamic drive, or caterpillar, that would enable the sub to run virtually silent. It is possible that this new drive system allowed the captain, a man named Ramius, their senior and perhaps most respected commander, do we have his picture available? Allowed Ramius to elude one of our attack boats, the Dallas, which trailed Red October from harbor this morning. It is also possible that this drive system, if operable, could render the Red October undetectable to our SOSIS warning nets in the Atlantic. Mr. Ryan, would you characterize this as a first strike weapon? Uh, that is a possibility, sir. Uh, it is designed to approach by stealth and to shower its target with multiple independent warheads with little or no warning before impact. God damn, things made to start a war. Proceed, Mr. Ryan. About the same time that Dallas lost contact, there were additional sailings from Polyarni and from Leningrad on the Baltic and from the Mediterranean. There are now some 58 nuclear submarines headed at high speed into the Atlantic. This afternoon's satellite pass over Polyarni found heat blooms in the engineering plants of the Kirov, the Minsk, and more than 20 other cruisers and destroyers indicating they were preparing to sail. This constitutes the bulk of the Soviet surface fleet. Admiral Greer, your conclusions. Well, sir, the data support no conclusions as yet. The absence of activity in the Pacific suggests this could be just an exercise. It may Suppose have nothing to do with... Suppose it's not an exercise. Suppose this is the beginning of a move against NATO. NSA can speak to that, Mr. Pelt. Judge. I must emphasize the extreme sensitivity of this information and that it not leave the room. Before sailing, Captain Ramius sent a letter to Admiral Yuri Pedorin, chairman of the Red Fleet Northern Political Directorate. That's her uncle. Was member of the party oh, uncle. Committee and Ramius' his wife. Pedorin's her uncle. Now, the contents of the letter are unknown. But Admiral Pedorin immediately demanded a meeting with Premier Chenyenko. And within minutes of that meeting, the Soviet fleet sailed with orders to find Red October and sink her. Sink her? Oh, my God, they've got a madman on their hands. 500 miles on the coast, we'll have less than two minutes more. Today's the 23rd, isn't it? What? Today is the 23rd, isn't it? Yeah. You wish to add something to our discussion, Dr. Ryan? Well, sir, I was just thinking that perhaps there's another possibility we might consider. Ramius might be trying to defect. Do you mean to suggest that this man has Proceed, come... Mr. Ryan. Ramey has trained most of their officer corps, which would put him in a position to select men willing to help him. But he's not Russian. He's Lithuanian by birth, raised by his paternal grandfather, a fisherman. And he has no children, no ties to leave behind. 
And today is the first anniversary of his wife's death. Oh, come on. You're just an analyst. What can you possibly know what goes on in this mine? I know Ramius, General. He's nearly a legend in the submarine community. He's been a maverick his entire career. I actually met him once at an embassy dinner. Have you ever met Captain Ramius, General? Admiral Hollis, how long before Ramius could be in a position to fire his missiles at us? Four days. All right, I'll brief the president. That'll be all, gentlemen. Dr. Ryan, would you stay for a moment, please? I said, speak your mind, Jack, but Jesus. Slammed the door on the general pretty hard, Jack. That was not my intention, sir. Oh, yes, it was. He was patronizing you, and you stomped on him. It's my opinion, he deserved it. Listen, I'm a politician, which means I'm a cheat and a liar. And when I'm not kissing babies, I'm stealing their lollipops. But it also means that I keep my options open. So. Let's assume for a minute that you're right and this Russian intends to defect. What do you suggest we do about it? We definitely grab the boat, sir. <laughs> hey, wait a minute. We're not talking about some stray pilot with a MiG. We're talking about several billion dollars worth of Soviet state property. <laughs> They're gonna want it back. Maybe it's enough then just to get some people on board and inspect it. Call it whatever you want to, a, a Coast Guard safety inspection. So how do we proceed? Well, first we would need to contact the commanders in the Atlantic directly. If the Russians get one whiff of this through the regular communication circuits, the game is up. Second, we need to figure out what can we do to help them. We need to devise a plan to intercede, ready to go at a moment's notice. And third, Somebody's got to go out there and make contact with Ramius and find out what his intentions really are. Okay, when do you leave? <laughs> Wait a minute. The general was right. I am not field personnel. I am only an analyst. You're perfect. I can't ask any of these characters to go. One, they don't believe in it. Two, they'd never stake their reputation on a hunch. Whereas you are expendable. Something like I'll give you three days to prove your theory correct. After that, we'll have to hunt down Ramius and destroy him. Will you do it? 